This is CNN. I'm Jim Moray in Los Angeles. The preliminary hearing, day four, set to resume again after this uh, lunch break, just about four minutes from now. The defense is trying to show that the LAPD used improper procedures in connection with the search of O.J. Simpson's house prior to obtaining a search warrant, and therefore certain evidence found should be thrown out. Let's go to our legal experts now. Roger Cossack, a criminal defense attorney here in Los Angeles, and Greta Van Susteren, a trial attorney in Washington, D.C. Ms. Van Susteren, first to you. That last bit of testimony that we just heard came just before the lunch break. What's your assessment on the defense uh, success so far? Well, I think the defense is doing extraordinarily well in showing that there was no emergency situation, that instead that these officers jumped the gun. The interesting thing will be is to see whether or not the judge ultimately agrees with me. Remember, the judge is going to make the decision in this case, and it's very difficult for a judge to throw out, to eliminate a substantial portion of the prosecution's case, and there's a lot of pressure on her not to throw out the evidence. Now, I think that this defense has done extremely well, and Roger and I differ on it, but I don't think that under these circumstances the police were right in jumping that fence. Mr. Kosak, it's very easy to sit back here and be an armchair quarterback, but we have to remember that a jury is not hearing this, but rather a judge. That should make a difference here. Well, we're going to hope that our judges will make the right call and not give in to uh, outside pressure. I think in this case, though, they're under a tremendous amount of pressure. Remember, there's nothing wrong with this evidence. It's not tainted evidence. It's just a question of whether or not the police acted improperly in gathering it. And it's a very, very tough call to throw it out. What is your assessment so far? If the judge were to make a determination based on what you've heard, how do you think she would rule? Well, I know that Greta differs with me, and Greta, I'm glad you're back there on the East Coast, but I think this evidence is coming in. Well, I think, Roger, you're probably right. The judge will allow it in, but that's because I think it's difficult for a judge to look the prosecution in the eye and say, police officers, I know you work very hard, but in this particular case, you violated Mr. Simpson's rights. For that reason, I have to take the extreme step, which I'm mandated to do by the U.S. Constitution, and eliminate any evidence you seized after an unconstitutional entry. It's a very tough thing for a judge to do, and I hope that in this particular occasion, if the judge does see it that way, the judge has the courage to do the right thing. Ms. Van Susteren, we were talking the other day about how long procedures seem to take in California. We're really not involved in the preliminary hearing at this stage, are we? Aren't we really looking at an evidentiary hearing? Well, that's exactly right. Um, we are looking at an evidentiary hearing. The preliminary hearing has sort of been put on hold for a short run. Um, we, those of us who don't uh, live in California often make cracks about the state of California, and in particular, lawyers have always said that the state of California takes much longer to do things than any place uh, in the country. And uh, as I said earlier in the show last week, that if I told a federal judge that a preliminary hearing was going to take more than two days, I think he or she would throw me in jail until I came to my senses. <laughs> Mr. Cossack, walk us through what we will probably see for the rest of the day. I will. But Greta, aren't you proud of the way we do uh, justice here in California? You know, those of us who are involved and interested in the Constitution, this is the way it works. This is the way it should be. And this is the way the testimony should be so that each side gets a fair opportunity to present what they believe is their case in court. Now, having said that, I think we're going to see further cross-examination of Detective uh, uh, Van Adder. I think uh, Detective Phillips will come out and Detective Van Adder's partner. I think that Shapiro and, and Yulman are going to have a go at all of them to try and break down that notion of theirs or that their belief, their reasonable belief that perhaps inside that house could have been uh, a, a dead body or someone to, who was in deep trouble. And I think that's what they're going to try and do. Will, but the problem is will the judge effectively have to put a hold to the proceedings to make her determination and then it can go on from there? Well, that's what the judge, the judge will make a decision on this particular motion and then we're going to go back to the preliminary hearing. The reason the judge is making the decision now is because the prosecution wants to introduce the evidence that was seized after the police officers vaulted the fence and first the judge has to make a decision whether or not that can be used against O.J. Simpson and whether it was unconstitutionally seized. Ms. Van Susteren, let's review, if we could, some of the testimony today. We've been hearing a lot about a Ford Bronco as possibly serving as the catalyst for police scaling the wall. We heard about a bit of blood that was found on the door handle. Well, the biggest problem, Jim, that the that the prosecution has with this is that the, when they saw the blood, they didn't they jumped the fence. They didn't get a search warrant. They didn't secure the premises. Uh, I see that court appears to be back in session. Let's listen in. We have the detective back on the stand, Detective Philip Van Adder.
Okay, this is significant testimony right here. You're listening to Detective Mark Furman of the LAPD. He's a homicide investigator, the uh, investigator who actually scaled the uh, fence at O.J. Simpson's mansion following the discovery of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman's body. All right, we are going to take uh, the afternoon recess. We'll take a 15-minute break at this time and start again just after 3.05. Okay, let's bring in Roger, uh, Roger Cossack, criminal defense attorney and former L.A. prosecutor. Mr. Cossack, what is the significance of what we've just heard? We've just heard for the first time that Mr. Al Cowlings was at the residence uh, sometime during the police investigation. Perhaps O.J. Simpson's daughter might have contacted Al Cowlings to come. This is following, uh, following a brief investigation around the scene, but before a search warrant was obtained. Well, this becomes important because uh, it's the first time we've actually heard the police articulate and tell us why they believed this was an emergency circumstance, why they believed they had a right to jump that fence and uh, look around. And so Detective Furman uh, tells us in a, in a calm, methodical way all of the things that uh, he saw and what he, he believed and what led him down that path to discover what is perhaps the most significant piece of evidence we've seen so far, uh, that glove which uh, has blood on it, which we'll find out more whose blood that is uh, a little later on. Let's go now to Greta Van Susteren in our Washington, D.C. Bureau. Is the prosecution laying the groundwork to show that the police acted in a reasonable manner, that they did not attempt to get a search warrant because there was an emergency? That's precisely what the prosecution is doing. They're trying to show that these police officers had a reasonable belief in their view that someone could be injured, that perhaps O.J. Simpson was somehow injured, or that they had some sort of emergency situation that they feared someone might be in the house to destroy evidence. So that's exactly what they're doing, and the officer's testimony was quite straightforward on that point. Okay, the court is taking a brief recess. So shall we right now. We will be back with more on the preliminary hearing for O.J. Simpson right after this. This is CNN. We're still on a brief break in the preliminary hearing, afternoon session, day three. The prosecutor is putting on witnesses to fight a defense motion to suppress evidence that the police obtained prior to uh, obtaining a search warrant at the O.J. Simpson house. We've been listening to Detective Mark Furman, an LAPD homicide investigator, talk about some of the evidence that they uncovered. One, the Bronco and the blood stain at the driver's door, other blood stains along the walkway up to the house, a bloody glove. And for the first time, we're hearing a reference to Al Cowlings, O.J. Simpson's friend who led O.J. Simpson in that white Bronco on the 60-mile chase while he was being sought by police on June 17th. Let's listen in to Detective Mark Furman during his testimony earlier today. Discovery of the glove uh, within, within minutes. Um, Detective Van Adder said, this is now a crime scene. Seal it, I'm gonna go write a warrant. And seal it means what? Uh, protect the evidence that has already been discovered. Uh, keep everybody out of the house. Ask the people that are in the house to please leave if they're not necessary personnel and to protect the premises. And was that done? Yes. Now, at the time in the house, do you recall who was there inside? I can remember uh, Mr. Cowlings was there, but I can't remember exactly what time he was asked to leave. I believe it, it, it was shortly after we uh, decided that we had to write a search warrant for this residence. Uh, so. I don't know specifically when he was asked to leave. Arnell was asked to leave uh, the property. I, bu I'm, I believe Arnell uh, contacted Mr. Callings, but I'm not sure on that. I have no knowledge. So to the best of your knowledge, by the time the decision was made to get to secure the house and get a search warrant, Arnell was there, A.C. Collings was there? I believe so, yes. Okay. Did you see any children there? Yes, and I don't know how that, I don't know whose children they were, and I don't know how that transpired. But they were all there at the time the decision was made to uh, get the search warrant? Yes. Let's bring in Roger Cossack, criminal defense attorney. Mr. Cossack, this is the first time that we've ever heard Al Cowling's name mentioned. Does it seem reasonable that he could have been allowed into the house 
once the investigation was underway. No, it doesn't seem re uh, reasonable, but these are uh, strange times and these are uh, particularly chilling circumstances. And after all, we know he is the best friend of O.J. Simpson and O.J. Simpson's daughter is there. And, uh, you know, perhaps as a good friend, the police let him in. The interesting thing that's going to occur this afternoon is for the first time, we're going to probably hear some and should hear some really in-depth cross-examination. It's up to the defense now to try and show that what these police officers painted as seemingly very reasonable really wasn't so reasonable in light of what they knew. And uh, you should hear, we should hear this afternoon some uh, cross-examination in light of uh, their motion, uh, which tries to point out that the, these police officers really were not uh, do, were doing things that really didn't need to be done. Let's go to trial attorney Greta Van Susteren in Washington, D.C. Ms. Van Susteren, is the prosecution painting a picture of reasonable activities by these police officers? They certainly are, Jim, but they have to do that. Since they don't have a warrant for this investigation, for this search, they have to come within one of the exceptions. And one of the exceptions is that there was some sort of emergency or that they were legitimately on the premises and they saw in plain view. Because police officers don't have to look the other way when they see evidence. And blood in a murder, of course, is evidence. But what you are going to see, or what we hope to see, is some uh, cross-examination by Mr. Shapiro, which will develop the testimony even further so the judge can make a decision whether, in fact, this was reasonable or whether or not the police officers are somehow embellishing it to fit within the exceptions to the warrant clause of the Constitution. Well, as you say, at this point, we've really only heard one side. So when the, when the cross-examination begins, what can we expect? What we can expect is what the, what the defense will attempt to do is to show that it was unreasonable. For instance, the, detect, the defense will want to show that it was unreasonable to go around the side of the house and look for something to investigate that noise, that there would be no reason to think that someone would, would be hurt who would be back there, and that in fact what the officers were doing was somehow going beyond any sort of investigation for, to see if anyone was in trouble. They're basically trying to show the officers' conduct as being completely unreasonable and irrational, and of course the process Prosecution witnesses have shown just the opposite so far. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be back in about 10 minutes as we continue our coverage of the preliminary hearing. Please stay tuned to CNN for other news around the world.